Hello and welcome. I am Matt Roddy, and this is the Greater Prescott Podcast, where we talk about, you guessed it, all things Greater Prescott. In this episode, I'm excited to have my friend and life coach, Tim Demi. Tim, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Matt. So Thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. One of the things that I love about Greater Prescott are the people. Mm. And, and I really feel that it's the people who live here that make it what it is. Yes, we have a wonderful downtown and we have a ton of outdoor activities and things mm-hmm. like that. It also requires people to keep it at those as central and as usable as they are and things like that. And so everyone has their own unique position in doing that. And I'm excited to get into what you do for a living and why you do it and, and what drew you to the greater Prescott area because that's what makes this area so special. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, you guys. Right. Please begin by telling the listeners uh, a five or so minute backstory on where you're born and raised, and a little bit of your childhood and into your adult age. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. I was uh, I was born in Buffalo, New York, and um, but our family moved to Phoenix when I was in high school. I have seven brothers and sisters, and wow. so there's eight of us, eight kids, mm-hmm. ten of us all together, and only half of us moved to uh, Phoenix because my older siblings were out of the house by then, mm. and um, so then that sort of. Uh, precipitated quite a few moves for me. I've moved around quite a bit from yeah, tell us. Phoenix. I went to Southern California for college. I was in LA for college. And then I was in San Diego for a dozen years after that. And never thought I would, uh, never thought of San Diego as, uh, as home. Yeah. Um, and eventually found myself at home in Southern Vermont. Okay. So moved from San Diego back to southern Vermont. Didn't really think I would ever move back east from the west, mm-hmm. but found home in Vermont. Okay. And then um, so spent another dozen years there and uh, was uh, in from Vermont, moved to um, Woodstock, New York for just yeah. a, a short time. And uh, I guess I guess I. I uh, I share all the different places and all the different moves because I have really oriented to place mm. for a long time. Like place has been yeah. really really important to me. Um, like the like I said, I was you know everybody loves San Diego. San Diego is a beautiful oh, yeah. place. But I, I never, was married there. Yeah, it's yeah. Very fond memories. But I never I never felt at home there. Okay. And literally the first day I set foot in. Um, Brattleboro, Vermont. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, this is home. Yeah. So wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I have, I have very, I've really oriented to place a lot. Mm-hmm. And, but when it was time to, like I said, move from Vermont to uh, Woodstock, New York, and was only there for about um, a year and a half, uh, when it was, it was time to leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, relationship that I had moved there for was over, and um, and I and I wasn't particularly drawn to that place. So even though I had, even though I had a really lovely community there, like I just, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't feel at home yeah. in that place. And I, I had no, I, I really had no idea where to go. Um, didn't know, had no idea where I was going to go, and, but. Um, but uh, the the uh, divine guidance that I got was to was to wait. Okay. You know? Just just wait. I knew that, uh, and uh, it was really tempting to, even though I didn't want to be there in that place, it was tempting to sort of just nail something down. It was really really tempting to, you know, I want to know where I'm going to be, and um, and but uh, so I I. Yeah, you know, just waited with the uncertainty, and um, my my parents had retired to Prescott Valley about sixteen years ago, and I'd been out, 
you know, occasionally, regularly to visit, but um, never, never had any interest in, never had any interest in Prescott Valley. Like I really didn't, uh, and uh, um, Prescott Valley is a lot different than Prescott. I really didn't know Prescott. We have a very diverse area, like you and I have talked about before. Yeah. Yep. And so I was never, you know, I was never drawn to this area. I was never drawn to this place, even though I'd been out, you know, visiting my parents quite a few times. Um, and then, uh, uh, coincidentally, and I don't believe in coincidence, <laughs> but coincidentally, <laughs> you know, at the time that I didn't know where I was going and ready to go somewhere, uh, my, uh, um, my mom and dad moved into assisted living and I just, mm. I came out to, I came out to visit. I came out to see what I could do to help. And, um, was just clear that this was the place for me to be and uh and Prescott in particular okay was the place for me to be um and in part like and and it was so I got to um I got to spend uh the last year of my dad's life close by yeah. and and so I got to see them a lot uh had never I had never lived near you know geographically near my parents as an right. adult and so um yeah, and so there was this understanding that I had that uh, the Prescott was the place for me to be, and at least in part, it was about being you know close to my mom and dad, being near my dad during the last year of his life. But I I knew as well that there was there was something more to it. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, when I came out to to look for a place to live, to look around at where I might want to live. Um, it just fell into place like that. Like I'd given myself a whole week. I had really, I really didn't think I was going to actually find a place. I just wanted to look around at mm -hmm. different areas and kind of get a sense yeah. of where I want to, where I might want to be. And, <laughs> um, the, the morning that I flew out, uh, you know, I email, got an email in my inbox, you know, saying this house is available for rent. And I'm like, well, that's it. There it is right there. Okay. So I, you know, I, I got here on Monday. I went to look at that house on Tuesday and like, that's it. Wow. And, and, and so it just was, uh, and, uh, so where, so, um, when was that? That was, um, that was December of, um, December of 2017. Okay. So I moved out here in January of mm -hmm. 2018 okay. and I live in the, uh, the mountain club area now, which is, uh, the, uh, which is uh, the pine in in the pine trees. Yep. I love living in the the ponderosa pines. Yep. Another reason this area is so diverse. You can go from Prescott Valley, which has it's actually quite hilly out there. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, get into Prescott, and all of a sudden there's a forest. <laughs> and it's really it's really really different. Like it's you, completely different. You know, it's different from just down the block. It's different yep. from you know so many other areas mm -hmm. of Prescott. Yeah. Another thing actually that you, what you said reminded me of is a lot of people in the Prescott area aren't from the Prescott area. <clears throat> We're, so whenever you're out at the square talking to people, you'll find that they're from another state. And so yeah. there's just a lot of different, uh, but it's not transient in that sense because I lived in Phoenix a very transient city. People mm -hmm. from har not nearly as many people born and raised there as what had moved there for most of the time work and the cost of living and a lot of things. However, it felt like a transient city where it was just is harder to connect. People were it just yeah. it, it was different. Nothing Th wrong with it. That was part of my experience in San Diego as well. Like there was one year that I was there where. Uh, a number, like a whole handful or so of friends all happened to live in the same neighborhood. And so there was this, you know, so I definitely did have more of an experience of community that year. But then, you know, very quickly, everyone moved on. Within a year or two, yeah. everyone had moved on. Mm -hmm. Probably largely to do with the metro metropolitan areas in general may, may have a little more of that. Yeah. But anyways... Tell us a little bit about the work, the type of work you've done, and that will bring us forward to what you now do. 
Very good. Um, I the type of work I've done. I I out of college. I um I went to work for the government for the state of California, and uh, it was with the intention of getting some experience that would allow me to go to graduate school in law. And um, the short story is that uh, I got diverted okay. from that path, um, and then really had no idea what I was going to do. Um, but I would say from a one thing that I was clear about early on uh, was that uh, I was dedicated, I would use the word dedicated, mm -hmm. to finding a way to make a living doing something that I loved mm -hmm. that made a difference for others. Okay. And so I... I uh, so you knew that. You had that sense years ago. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was working. <laughs> I was one of the one of the government jobs that I had for the state of California was, was working for the Department of Motor Vehicles. Okay. And uh, um, that was um. Well, <clears throat> it just it wasn't work that I loved. Yeah. Um. And I had never, like, I had never contemplated the idea of uh, being self-employed. Okay. Like, that just wasn't in, you know, it just had never occurred to me. It yeah. wasn't in my background so much. Um, but uh, it turns out that's what there was to do. I, <laughs> I, I you know, I, I tried exploring a bunch of different things, like what, what could I do that I would, you know, could enjoy that I could make a living at and make a difference for others. And eventually I started working with a life coach myself. Okay. And, and that was when it hit me like very quickly, it hit me like, oh, well, I think this is what I was, I think this is what I'm looking for okay. to do myself. To set the context, how old are you and when did that happen? Well, I'm curious of uh, uh -huh. the time frame of things. Yeah. I am, I'm 52. Okay. And I worked, uh, for the state of California for 10 years mm -hmm. before I find, before I, um, before I left. Mm -hmm. And then I was, um, uh, it was another, let's see. It was another, it was another few years. It was another few years after that. Uh, so I think it was 2004 that okay. I first started working with a coach. Yeah. Um, and it occurred to me that uh, this is what I want to yeah. do. And so I started, so I took my formal coach training in 2005. Okay. All right. So then has, have you been doing, have you been a life coach since 05? I have been, I've been a life coach since 2005. Okay. So it'll be 15 years this wow. year. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. So I would like Tim to explain now what your occupation is as we sit. Very good. Um, I want to hit the pause button. The disclosure, Tim is a friend and he has also been my life coach. Uh, we go to church together. We sparked up a conversation uh, randomly meeting when he told me he was a life coach and there was something in my heart that desired that idea and you know the more we I talked with you and learned what you did and why you do it the more I thought that's that's what I want and need right now I've been in a season recently where I've started a new job and we haven't been able to meet but we met for a while I mean over a year I think it was over a year. yeah I think it was a over year. a year so yeah. just to disclose <laughs> Tim has also been my life coach. And so this is also just a fascinating type of work that you do. So I'm excited for you to share about what you do. Yeah, as I recall, you were all over it when we uh, when we first met. Yeah. Very interested. Um, well, so uh, in general, life coaching is about, it's, it's about accomplishing results. It's about... Um, it's about accomplishing results that are outside of what's already known to us, outside of already what what's already familiar to us. I okay. like to use the word unprecedented, unprecedented okay. results. It's, 
you know, things we haven't done, places we haven't been before, mm -hmm. uh, accomplishments that we haven't accomplished before. Um, so that's what, you know, basically what life coaching mm -hmm. is and about. Um, I like to say that there's uh, there's two different hemispheres. Uh, that that co coaching fundamentally involves two different hemispheres, one of which is uh, facilitative, meaning that it's about it's about uh, identifying your objective, uh, where you want to go to, what you want to accomplish, and then creating a plan to accomplish gotcha. that with milestones and action plans and all that. So there's that whole facilitative. The, the more of the action based mm -hmm. hemisphere. I want to eat better. I want to exercise, and now help me put together a plan for it. Or, where, where do you want to get to, and yeah. and what action is there to take to get there? Um, and then the other hemisphere, I would has to do much more with awareness about becoming aware, uh, mostly about becoming aware of our automatic or default operating systems, um, sometimes called survival mechanisms, like the the ways that early on that we learned to uh, get by in life, survive in life, adapt to our circumstances, even produce results, but they're not ulti ultimately, they're, they're not, um, they have they have limitations as useful as they can be as useful as they, as they were have been. yeah they they ultimately at some point they get in the way of uh of other possibilities for our lives okay i i would imagine one of the things i was most interested in was that first hemisphere you talked about what was it called facilitative facilitative mm -hmm. i there are goals that i have there are things that i want to accomplish yeah I just I'm struggling to do them on my own. Yeah, it's it it's the other hemisphere that probably and I I won't I can't speak for most of your clients, but I wonder how many of them come in under the first I want to get things done and do certain things, and then realize wow, there's also a lot more opportunity that I wasn't aware of, or I just the way I've been operating is not best suited for. Other things, so it's it's fascinating. That that's right. I would agree. It it's um, you know, we we mostly can't see, uh, we mostly can't perceive for ourselves uh how we're operating, where we are operating from, because it's just like it's just the water we swim in, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it uh, it uh, and 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 uh, um. Yeah, and so it often takes someone else to point out, oh, like, you know, this strategy that you have um, serves you well in some areas, but it's not going to work in this other area where you're aiming to accomplish this thing. Yeah. Explain the difference between a life coach and a therapist. That is often... it. Uh, uh, because there are still a lot of people who are unfamiliar with life coaching, and so I I do find that it's helpful to understand uh, life coaching by comparing and contrasting with yeah. with therapy. And the way that I like to say it is that um, coaching is primarily it's first and foremost about it's about getting somewhere, it's about accomplishing something, it's about producing results, and only secondarily or incidentally is it about healing mm. um, uh, and processing of emotions, yeah. um, whereas therapy, uh, and again, these are generalizations, of but there's, you know. There's some truth to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say they're generally true. Uh, ther therapy, is, therapy is the other way around. Therapy is primarily about healing, primarily about processing emotions, and only secondarily or incidentally, incidentally about, about getting somewhere or accomplishing something. I think that's a, a really important distinction to make because they they can accomplish some of the same things, but that absolutely start from a different foundation. Um, and so there's, in my case, I've done both therapy mm -hmm. when I was in college and now life coach with you. And yeah, two very 
to drastically different experiences, I needed the therapy back then. Mm -hmm. I could have benefited for some life coaching in that sense as well. Um, but it, 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 so it's important for you to be able to distinguish, well, here's what I'm not, which are largely a lot of the things a therapist can help people with. Yeah, and and it's um it's kind of ironic because my uh my emphasis now as a coach um I think it was about four and a half years ago it it came to me it occurred to me that for me coaching is a ministry and this was after I'd been coaching for about 10 years yeah. um and um and it, it, it took some time for me to really understand what that meant. Uh, and again, coincidentally or not, um, it was literally the month before I moved to Prescott mm. that uh, I clearly, clearly understood for myself uh, what coaching as a coaching as ministry means for me and had and had just finished uh, just completed the mission statement. Okay. For coaching his ministry, literally, the, literally the month before I moved to to Prescott, um, and I would say that uh, the well, for one thing, faith is fundamental to coaching his ministry, and it's not, I would say, as a rule inside of uh, life coaching in general, inside okay. of professional life coaching in general. Um, Set the stage for this because this yeah. this is a pretty this is a big deal with respect to why you do what you do now because you've definitely shifted in terms of coaching as uh, what's the term Co coaching as corporate coaching as professional coaching professional coaching versus yeah. coaching as ministry coaching as ministry mm -hmm. we're all familiar with professionals who do things uh, you pay I I pay a price to you and you provide something for me mm -hmm. your in a sense your the model that you now operate under is slightly different from that and there's reasons and nuances so please share because I think this is it's a game changer yeah um, and I, I, I mentioned that I'd been coaching for 10 years before this awareness came to me. And what I didn't say is that uh, I'd been struggling for 10 years in a way and, and struggling with even saying that who I am as a life coach and what I do is life coaching. There was, I, I, at the time I didn't, uh, I didn't understand it exactly. I can look back now and say that um, there was something that it was out of alignment mm -hmm. for me in um uh inside of you know what what professional coaching is in general in the world and um and so then um yeah i did it did it did it came to me that for me coaching is a ministry and the uh the distinctions that uh, it took another really two years to understand for myself what is what is distinct from coaching as a ministry and professional mm -hmm. life coaching and and there's two fundamental there's two fundamental differences um, one is that I would say uh, professional life coaching is in general it's mostly available to the people with the most resources to so to a degree it's exclusive. Um, whereas coaching as ministry is inclusive, meaning that is it's available to whomever is willing, regardless of financial resources. Um, and the other fundamental difference is, is the the is faith. That um, again, uh, my experience of professional life coaching is that it's not devoid of faith, but faith is not fundamental. And so, um, uh, meaning that, um, yeah, it, it, um, meaning that even, well, <clears throat> I, w I would say that, uh, we don't even know ourselves well enough necessarily 
to say where we want to get to in life. So I've been talking about how, you know, life coaching is about it's about getting somewhere. It's about accomplishing something. It's about producing results. And I would say that for many of us, we don't even know ourselves well enough to to to. I mean, we can certainly say we can certainly have an idea of where we want to go, what we want to do, where we want to get to, but but does it come from but does it but where does that come from where does that desire where does that interest come from yeah. and so and so that's where uh i find it that's where faith comes in that's where my the focus of my work with people now is to focus on you know connection with connection with god and through that through that relationship um our I would say two things. So first of all, the the ideas for the results that we have can be inspired um, so that they're not necessarily coming from our minds, from our our own wants, our own you know uh, uh, but they can actually come from a a uh, like through a divine connection. Um, and then, I still say it's still it's still even if we even if we don't know ourselves that well we can still set out to accomplish something we can still have a destination in mind Absolutely. for ourselves and and to go for it and that's it's and it's very valuable even if we don't inside of coaching as ministry I would say that the the emphasis of that is not necessarily on getting to where we're aiming for. It's not necessarily about getting that particular result, mm-hmm. which I would say is more of the emphasis in, emphasis in professional coaching. In professional coaching, the more, there's more emphasis on, you know, you say what you want and you get there. Um, and uh, and so I find that methodology is really valuable. It's really important to set out on a journey and to you know to to set out for a just a destination. And and but what's in, what's more important about getting there is getting to know ourselves. And from getting to know ourselves and in our um, you know in our relationship with the source, yeah. then. We will have results. We'll have outcomes. Those results might be very different than we set out for, but they'll be good. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, and and they'll they'll probably be a lot easier too. There'll probably be a lot less effort to attain whatever there is to attain when um, when uh, when we're truly aligned with the divine. Well said. <laughs> Well said. Thank you. <clears throat> you touched on it earlier. Tell us why you do what you do. I shared with you before we started. You guys can buy a cup of coffee from anywhere. One of the reasons I absolutely love going to Dutch Brothers is they are so stinking friendly. Uh-huh. They, they, they're out there taking your order in the drive through line or if you walk up they're the most friendly fun they ask you how you're doing and all the you you've talked to them for five minutes and you're going hey, you just kind of lose track of time that's what makes dutch brothers special i haven't been there i'll have to try it oh tim <laughs> you're missing out it's just a fantastic place you are a life coach there are other life coaches yeah uh, however there's more to it than just what you do. So speak to your why. Um yeah, it does and it it has it is a it's evolved. It's been, you know, fifteen years now. So the why has evolved. Still fundamentally I would say the why is so that I and others, like that all of us, basically all of us can um provide for ourselves and our families in life, doing something that we love that contributes to each other, that yeah. contributes to the world. Like that, uh, I, I really think that's how it's supposed to be. And that's how we were made to be, mm-hmm. um, is, uh, uh, yeah, that's it basically. Yeah. Yep. 
You know, it's interesting because I've also come a long ways in terms of figuring out my why. Mm-hmm. And it largely, regardless of what job I've been doing at the time, is to help people. Like mm. I, I get a high from helping people. Yeah, and I, I it that's and I, everyone's different, but there's just something about it that I cannot, I can't get enough of almost. <laughs> and so it's been like that whether I've worked at golf courses, or landscaping, or at the hot tub company. It's just a really, and that's ultimately why, why I I do what. That's my purpose, I guess. It just so happens it works out differently in different life scenarios and seasons. And and I do think there is something that we are all uniquely made for. And I don't mean that that, you know, and I don't, uh, I don't mean by that that, uh, you know, you were meant to drive a garbage truck and right. I was meant to, like, it, it's not about doing any Correct. one thing in particular mm-hmm. but it's about being but it's about um you know we each have unique talents and it's mm-hmm. about expressing those talents and and they can be expressed in 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 lots of different so ways so many ways but it's about expressing mm-hmm. those talents and you know providing for ourselves yep. providing for our our family and uh, and 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 I th- I think pretty much as a rule like it I I would say that it goes without saying that if we are if we are expressing our talents, then other people are going to benefit from that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm really, really intrigued by an artist and not one who necessarily paints, but who simply does their job to the best of the bil- their ability mm-hmm. because they love it mm-hmm. and the benefit it can bring other people. So literally, the garbage truck guy, can he can be his own in a sense artist Uh, it's it's a very it's a general term for not someone who paints i mean we call artists all you know we use the term artist for a lot of different people whether it's a painter or a musician and so on and so forth but there's a, a a certain type of artist you are as well which is just it's it's fascinating and and i think one of the most important things that I hear from you, it's really easy, I think, to get caught up in being, go, attending a life coach and in a sense how selfish maybe from the get-go or just from not knowing truly what happens, mm-hmm. that it's selfish. Um, and there can be a lot of, it can be challenging to continually look inside ourselves. Um and somewhat empty. Like, so it ha- what I'm saying is it has to also include others. And that's one mm. thing, amazing thing about an artist mm-hmm. is that it is not just a- about them. It, yeah. There's obviously part of it and, and the outworking brings benefit to other people and pleasure to other people. And so, and I think you said it, you know, people initially come because they want to accomplish things, which often some of that is personal, like, I simply just want to start exercising, so I need a plan. Mm-hmm. But what you learn is that in that other hemisphere, other people then get included. And there's there's just this awesome, I don't even know the word. There's just a lot of amazing things going on when it starts happening. I, I think we were made to be creative you know you talk yeah. about being artists i think yeah. we were made to be creative mm-hmm. and for um and maybe mostly because uh, uh 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 for 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 reasons of survival i would say for reasons of survival you know most of us learn to uh, uh to believe that uh being our creative selves is not what will allow us to survive in life. Right. Um, maybe is like the most basic way to put it. Yeah. And um, ultimately, uh, I believe that that's not true, that being our creative selves not only um, can allow ourselves to survive in life, but it's what it, it is. It, it, it allows it's what allows us individually to to thrive and for the community to yeah. thrive like the more the more that each of us can be our really unique creative selves i think the more that everyone thrives 
Amen. Yeah, I just did a podcast with Tracy from Black Butterfly Artists and Chocolate. Mm-hmm. At her heart, she is an artist. It just so happens she does it with chocolate. But the work that she does and the pleasure that it brings others is phenomenal. And that's I think that's what you're speaking to, that the, the power of doing and being who you were created to be. And it's, it's not just about the person. It's it's right. about much, much more. Yeah. That's the why. And I think that's it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. Thank you. Let's segue. You have lived in Prescott now going on... Almost two and a half years. Two and a half. So yeah, yeah, coming up on three. Tell us about your greater Prescott experience and what it is about this area that you've that you love because I you've come to love yeah it, it it's kind of interesting because you know my business is not really uh Prescott centric um and so it, it's um uh um like the uh most of the people I talk to most of the people I work with are uh by phone right by um by video, by video conference. Yeah, and, I would. I'm probably one of the only people you've consistently in person met with. Yeah, there's just a few, <laughs> and so really, yeah. it is. It is. It isn't Prescott centric, and yet, um, you know, f- me being in Prescott, me being in a place like Prescott where uh, I feel at home, you know, and where I can. You know, where I live is a mile and a half from the square mm-hmm. downtown and a mile from the border of the National Forest. Yeah. So I live literally live on the, you know, I, I, everything that downtown has to offer to me is immediately available to me. And everything that the thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of acres of National Forest mm-hmm. uh, has available to me is, is like is right outside right outside my doorstep. Mm-hmm. And it just is really what, um, I, I work a lot, you know? I spend uh, a lot of time um, <clears throat> on the phone and and uh, I spend a lot of time talking with people, working with people, supporting people to, um, you know, to transform their lives, to provide yeah. for it's them. It's not light work in that respect. I mean, it's not entirely heavy, but... It's yeah challenging. It 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 is challenging, and I'm not. Well, it it's what it, being in a place like Prescott is what sources me. It, it provides gotcha. it provides so mm-hmm. much for. It, it provides what I need to do That's to be the best awesome. at the work that I do, and to be and to do more of the work that I do. Like to to continually to be uh, to continually uh, uh, support more people yeah. and yeah. To yeah. the best of your ability. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, tell us about a few things in the greater Prescott area that you do. Let me find your favorites. I think the biggest thing is I love I love the trails. Okay. I love the trails and uh, uh, try to get out every week. Actually, one of my favorites is um, I love the uh, the Thumb Butte Trail, mm-hmm. the trail that goes up and around around yeah. Thumb, Thumb Butte. I, I aim to do that every Every Thursday afternoon after work. Good work. Uh, I I aim to get up there and yep. and do that trail, and it it's just I love it. It's one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite times of the week. Okay. I always come down the other side of the mountain, having resolved something in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> having resolved. It's amazing something. what the outdoors do. Yeah. Every time I go camping, which is not frequently enough, there's this moment where I go, Why do I not? Get out more. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I do, I love, um, you know, and if I, like I said, I do that, you know, I have my little Thumb Butte routine every Thursday evening. and um, But I love to get out and walk in the in the Mountain Club area, in the, you know, in the Ponderosas. Um, and then um, just all the different trails. Like I love the, the, the Granite Mountain trails mm. and the... Um, yeah, the 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 
uh, there's the, you know Prescott has the the 50 mile loop. Yes. Like I I tell people about there and tell people about that and they're like you know 50 miles of oh, yeah. trails that are that encircle Prescott. Mm-hmm. That is. That's fantastic. Like that's so rare and so precious. It, it is. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's the the outdoors is that's the big that's big thing spot. for me. Um, mm-hmm. But I also I love, um, I love that it's a small town. I love that it's a f- a friendly town. That it's really easy to get to know people and the the um, you know the the. It's kind of funny to say, but the downtown square is so picturesque. Like it's such a picturesque place, mm-hmm. and all of the the independent businesses in in Prescott are really refreshing as well. Um, I don't know. It kind of, in a way, harkens back to a simpler time. I don't know if it, it was. It absolutely does. It, it's just, um, yeah. It, it, it's really it's really nice to see all of the independent businesses and um, um, and um, yeah, there's uh, the, I, I think what I'm trying to say, there's just an atmosphere to it. It's it's a bit hard. It's a bit difficult to articulate. It's like well, I don't know how do you, how do I explain it? It just feels good, you know. It's a it's, we've got a square and we've got big cottonwood trees and we've got you know. Uh, Mm-hmm. Friendly people and um, it's mostly quiet. Yep. You know, well, but it's not too quiet. Like no, there's yeah. enough. There's enough <laughs> happening. You know, <laughs> yeah. It, it's a bit difficult to articulate. It's just it has such a, a great atmosphere. Mm-hmm. It's a vibe, I guess people would say. A vibe. It mm-hmm. is. It is absolutely a vibe. And mm-hmm. I lived in. I was born and raised in Tucson, Arizona, where I lived for 18 years. Mm. Then I moved to Phoenix, where I was for 17 years, and then I moved up here. And I remember one of the first times that I vacationed up here. Mm. I, I, you know, I thought I was in a different world. It is. It, it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. And even it's 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 great. I mean, because we've got, you know, we've got Prescott Valley, and we've got a Prescott Valley, and we've got all the you know, the stores that are out there. And it's mm-hmm. really, it is, it's great to have that. It is and, really convenient to have certain amenities. Yeah. Um, and still somehow, uh, like Prescott feels like this a bit of a secluded, separate space. Isolated. Or, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. And it probably has a lot to do with like being surrounded by, you know, on like three sides by all the national forest. But it, mm-hmm. it just has this, um, um, and, and, you know, and, and the word isolated kind of, there's a, uh, it just feels like there's a, there's a containment to it that just feels good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like being in a nest or something. Yeah. Yep. And I, and I think that's probably one of the top reasons that people do enjoy either visiting here or living here is just, and it's hard to put into words mm-hmm. what it, yeah it's because it's not exactly just one thing it's it's a bunch of different things yeah more of a feel than definitely anything yep. all right i have a few questions for you this is the rapid fire question section so you just got to give me the answer that's at the top all right the I'll tip try not of to your think tongue about it too much that yeah favorite thing about greater prescott the trails. Favorite restaurant in Greater Prescott. Um. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name. <laughs> the uh, the. Um, Tell uh, us about it. Uh, it's like the farm to table. Farm provisions. Farm provisions. Fantastic. I only ate there once, but I loved it. Oh, Ryan. Oh and my br- gosh. Oh, can I say? An, I love limoncello too. Limoncello. Oh, and Gato Azul. Oh, that was three. You asked me for <laughs> I, one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Moving. Interesting. Moving from South Scottsdale, where Old Town is a a restaurant mecca. I remember thinking, I'm really gonna lose out on a lot of great restaurants. And we have a lot of great restaurants we have a lot out here. Of great restaurants, and yeah. I think it largely comes down to they are. I always call them mom and pop. They're oftentimes husband wife own, and they're yeah. very passionate about their food and good so, at it, and and very good at it. Yeah. 
What's the one thing on your greater Prescott bucket list? Mm. Hmm. I haven't made that list yet, but one for the first thing that comes to mind mm-hmm. is to do the uh, to do the uh, the circle trail, the whole the fifty okay. mile fifty mile trail. Yep. What are three words to describe living in Prescott? Um, peaceful, beautiful, and quiet. If you weren't a life coach, then what would you be doing? Um... I might be um I might be uh living on top of a mountain um not necessarily a hermit okay move but, to the uh, Himalayas or uh I don't need to go to the Himalayas no um so what would but, you do? What would I do? I mean, uh, what what do hermits do? I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself <laughs> a hermit because um it that sounds too antisocial mm-hmm. and I'm not antisocial. But um I would what I would do so I I would commune with God is what I would do. Gotcha. Last question. What's your favorite summer activity in Greater Prescott? Mm. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is I love the farmer's market. Um, it seems kind of weird to say that that's my favorite summer activity, but maybe it is. What else comes to mind? Mm. You know what? I love um, camping. Mm. Yeah, and there's something about camping in the summer in Prescott than camping other times of the year it's just Mm -hmm. you know tad bit warmer yep which makes it better it does (laughs) (laughs) we just bought a family tent oh you did just came earlier this week so yes we're excited to get out and enjoy the outdoors and it's amazing from where let's just say the square from the square you can drive 15 minutes and get to a bunch of amazing campgrounds and that's another just huge benefit to being here you don't have to drive very far yet you're out it's gonna be quiet you're gonna see wildlife and stars oh i love that too that we have you know that we have the the low light yes that we have yeah when we were in phoenix our oldest wyatt didn't really know stars and then we moved here and and Mm -hmm. one night it hit emily and i because he made a comment about the stars and oh yeah they're These are stars, and we get to see them. You guys, thank you very much for listening to the Greater Prescott Podcast. It is people like Tim who make the Greater Prescott area what it is. It's the activities that we have talked about that make this area so, we believe, wonderful. We are excited to live here and to continue doing those things and and helping future generations to be able to do that uh that's what we love and are excited about so tim absolutely i genuinely genuinely appreciate your time thank you for sharing tell people how they can get a hold of you if they are interested in life coaching um probably best by by email okay which is uh exodus coaching at gmail.com okay i'll put it up Okay. And um, yeah, that's probably the best yeah. way. If you have any questions, because that's where I started with you. I got, I have questions. I don't know uh-huh. exactly what you do. And frankly, I don't exactly know what I want either. Yeah. I think that's probably something you encounter early on is pe- clients think they know, kind of, they have a feeling. Yeah, they can't. It's hard to express. Sometimes, sometimes people really do know, um, but there are plenty of times people don't. Like, yeah. I just know I'm... I want to be headed somewhere. I'm not quite sure where or what, though. Yeah. 
everyone. Thank you very much for listening to the Greater Prescott Podcast, and we will see you later. Thank you, Matt.